But let's return to this exclusive tonight. Tonight, I can reveal the Albanese government has granted an Australian visa to a Palestinian who liked horrific posts that celebrated the massacre on October 7. Labor gave Zahar Abiyamro a visa after the October 7 terror attacks, and he arrived in Australia late last year. The 21-year-old is now living and working in Melbourne. Abu Amro is one of 80 Australians on a list we've obtained of nearly 500 Palestinians who've been granted visas to leave Gaza. On October 7, when, as you know, 1,200 innocent Israelis were slaughtered, Abu Amro liked this tweet, which shows Palestinians celebrating in the streets and it congratulates Hamas on the attacks. It says... Congratulations to Operation Our Axa Flood, which is how Hamas describes the October 7 invasion, which embodies the will of the steadfast, steadfast Palestinian people and their courageous resistance. At this crucial time, we stand alongside our brothers and sisters in Palestine and stress the need to support their cause and work to end the occupation and establish their independent state. That on October 7. On October 7, he also liked an image that celebrated the kidnapping of an Israeli who's being dragged through the streets by Hamas without any pants on. And he liked a tweet that had this image attached to it. And we need to warn you, this image is highly distressing. It purports to be Hamas holding Israeli hostages the day after the terror attacks. Abu Amru also liked this tweet that shows the Hamas paragliders invading Israel. And it says, the parachute landing of Muslims in Gaza was based on their trust in God. And the Zionists are sad in their dancing, so we won. And it goes on. And then also this one that says, enter against them through the gate, for when you enter it, you will surely be victorious. He also reshared a post on Twitter on October 8 that expressed support for what he called, or what he, well, the post he shared called the Palestinian resistance. And then on LinkedIn, he liked a post calling for a boycott of Dell Technologies because its chairman and CEO, Michael Dell, said he stood with Israeli President Isaac Herzog and Israel. In December, Zahar started a crowdfunding page where he speaks about how his family are out of Gaza with the exception of his father. He said the funds raised through this campaign will be used to facilitate the safe and swift relocation of my father from Gaza. The money will cover the costs associated with securing necessary documentation, travel expenses and any unforeseen challenges that may arise during the process. Now, Abu Amro is now in Melbourne. We put questions to him today. He says he doesn't support the terror attacks from October 7. He claims his Twitter account may have been hacked. Now, this right here is the list of hundreds, nearly 500 Palestinians who've been granted visas to leave Gaza. 81 of them headed, headed for Australia. It includes their name, date of birth, citizenship status and their Palestinian ID number. Another name on this list is blogger, journalist, Plestia Alakart. She has more than 4 million followers on Instagram and the Jerusalem Post has described her as spreading Hamas propaganda that Israel had bombed the Al-Ali hospital and killed more than 1,000 people. Here she is the day after that attack when mainstream media outlets globally had already corrected the record to state that Israel had no role in this. Yesterday, a complete massacre happened in Al Ahli Hospital. Around 1,000 around 1,000 civilians were killed and martyred. Right now, I'm with I'm with Dr. Ghassan Abu Sitta. He was there. What's happening is a complete genocide. Like even the doctor, he lost his phone. He went. To, he was like in the ambulance la, in the ambulance last thing with wounded people. And right now, he doesn't know where his phone is. So that was all false. It was an Islamic Jihad rocket that misfired and hit the hospital, and only 50 people were believed to have been killed, not 1,000. Israel had nothing to do with this. 
On October the 12th, so just a few days after the terror attacks, Plestia claimed on British GB News that Israel was committing a genocide in Gaza. Today, I'm telling you what happened yesterday and what is still happening. It's a genocide, literally a genocide. It's not a massacre. No mention of the terror attacks just a few days earlier. The Jerusalem Post reports that in her posts, she has not provided any explanation for the commencement of the airstrikes in Gaza, namely the October 7 massacre. At a time when social cohesion is sadly collapsing in Australia and anti-Semitism is at unprecedented levels, the Australian government, the Labor government, needs to be careful about who it grants precious visas to. And our revelation tonight that the Albanese government has granted a 21-year-old Hamas sympathiser a visa calls into question the adequacy of their security checks. We revealed on Monday's program, and this has now become a big story this week, that the Albanese government had quietly tripled, nearly tripled, the number of Palestinians they're trying to bring into Australia with 2,273 granted visas since October 7. We also reported that the visas were being granted in as little as one hour. Here is a DFAT official making that admission to James Patterson, who did an extraordinary job at Senate Estimates. Some individuals claim their visitor visa for relatives were approved within one hour. It is possible. Sure, but how could you possibly do all the necessary security and other checks in just an hour from an applicant? I mean, that's lightning speed approval. When we apply that, um, that vast range of information to, to consideration of visitor visas. So if you look globally, um, a, a very large number of our visitor visas would be done um, inside an hour. Uh, the, the assessment is essentially um, looking at all the information we hold yeah. and applying that in a number of ways to, sure, to the application in front of us. Foreign Minister Penny Wong promised, promised Australians that rigorous security checks would be undertaken when she first announced that 860 visas had been issued late last year. How have a few short weeks been enough time, though, to do proper security checks? Uh, because as James Patterson um, said on our program last hour, that Dennis Richardson said this could take months, not weeks. We take the advice of agencies, uh, and uh, the advice I have been given is that all appropriate security checks, character checks and identity checks have been undertaken. How can you be certain, though, that these people aren't linked with or sympathetic to Hamas? Because we have undertaken, the government and its agencies are undertaking appropriate security check. I'm very uh, aware of the focus that the government has and security agents have, have on keeping Australians safe. She went on Sunrise, held press conferences. There were so many television interviews and others where she insisted that rigorous checks were taken place, taking place. Well, those commitments were hollow. Now, we've gone back to Penny Wong this week to say, how can these checks be rigorous when they're only taking as little as an hour? Well, the response, this is best directed to the Department of Home Affairs. She doesn't want to have anything to do with this now. She's backing away from her earlier commitment that those security checks were thorough, telling us to go to Home Affairs to Claire O'Neill. Well, we asked Claire O'Neill's office today about how some of the people we've spoken about tonight were granted visas. Their response was that we don't comment on individual cases. The Prime Minister, though, today defended that security checks were being thorough, even if they took as little as an hour. Here he is. The checks are exactly the same as what was in place uh, under the former government. Peter Dutton is someone who no issue is too big to show how small he is. He is someone who has multiple fear and scare campaigns. He always does that. He turns matters of public interest into an attack on Peter Dutton. Opposition leader Peter Dutton has expressed concern in an interview with Ray Hadley today that the security checks just aren't good enough. They're now bringing in 2,000 people from, uh, from the Gaza Strip during the course of a war where Hamas, a listed terrorist organisation in our country, is in control and they're bringing people in with one-day approvals. So 
not with the requisite checks that you would expect, the biometrics checks, etc. They're bringing those people in uh, in, in record time. Uh, and you wonder why we have problems uh, in this country. And again, I think the Prime Minister is creating another issue here. His responsibility is to keep our country safe. And at the moment, uh, he's presiding over decisions uh, which are doing completely the opposite. Now, let's be clear. Of course, innocent civilians in Gaza, innocent families deserve refugee status and they deserve to be out of harm's way. The loss of life in Gaza after the Hamas terror attacks in Israel is devastating. And the high death toll is part of Hamas's strategy. It's why they use human shields and they hide their infrastructure under civilian sites. And it's, this is why the need to help the genuine, innocent families and citizens, this is why it's essential that the Albanese government conducts proper security screening to ensure that the people who are granted visas to come to Australia are the most deserving and not those who support Hamas or the terror attacks from October 7. Not those who could further the anti-Semitism crisis we already have in this country.